Hello, Billy the Artist here, back with another How To Draw video. And today we are doing someone called Tom. Now, a lot of you guys out there don't know who Tom is, but he is the face. He is one of the programmers at YouTube on Creator Insider. If you check out the Creator Insider channel, Tom is the one of the main person who gives all the information to all the creators, uh, old and new, along with many, many others. And the reason I'm doing this is Tom actually put out a tweet through the YouTube creators uh, Twitter feed about pairing people up with other YouTubers doing collabs. Now, I didn't actually get paired. They were running some kind of interesting... Uh, new system to try and pair people up with others to do collaborations and the computers didn't actually match me with somebody else they needed more than 10,000 uh, subscribers I'd got just under 30,000 and there was no kind of direct match it's just some new system wonderful thing that they are trying and just through little twitter exchanges I said oh you know I'm thinking of doing your portrait so here we are doing Tom but before we go any further please do like and subscribe and tick that bell so that you're notified when new how to draw lessons are available because we are doing lots and lots and lots especially in this current time rather interesting i know anyway some of the most recent we have queen barb from the trolls movie for you uh, absolute rocking trolls out there again dead simple shapes do check out link in the cards in the description how to draw anything part one using basic shapes link up in the cards and in the description for that but do check that out uh bob was good fun to do along with all the other uh characters like I say there's people like the simpsons the incredibles secret life of pets uh toy story olaf's in there lego there's lots and lots of beginners but the reason i do this is because i use exactly the same techniques in this as i do in this and drawing tom so this is ariana grande and again, this is up on YouTube. Uh, you can check out the How to Draw Portraits playlist, playlist link if you check up in there. Uh, and Ariana is up on there along with others. And I did the guys from SAS Who Dares Wins in the UK. So there's all kinds of portraits, but it's just drawing using techniques. Now, the same techniques are in this that are in this. And I'll be using the same in drawing Tom. It's just developing your skills. And that's what I'm interested in doing. Also, there is, check out the link in the cards in the description, Harry Potter playlist. I have been asked to do loads of Harry Potter characters. And everyone's now banging on about Star Wars and Avengers. Well, they have been for a long time anyway. And lots of other things, Lord of the Rings and all kinds, Game of Thrones, you name it. They're all planned for the future, but there's only little old me and I have to do all of this and then get it ready and get it sorted and still see my family. Uh, well, especially the ones that I'm living with at the moment, uh, which is absolutely lovely, but still have to do life like everybody else. But in the Harry Potter playlist, recent ones ooh, have been, here we have Sirius and the Dark Lord himself. Uh, again, on I think it was Snape, uh, Voldemort. There is somebody on YouTube with this prof with a profile picture of Voldemort called Voldemort, and I had an interesting exchange. He's like, Muggle, when are you going to draw me? <laughs> oh, ha, my lord, here's your here's your portrait lesson now, and it was just a really good exchange. But again, these are just great subjects to do, and like I say, the most recent was Sirius. And then I'm going to do, I'm aiming to do one Harry Potter character a week, which will allow me to do other stuff as well to build up. So please be patient with all of that. But we have uh, Dumbledore, Richard Harris. We have the sorting hat on top of Harry's head. Again, these are using more complex uh, grid structures, two centimeter grids. We'll cover that in a bit. And these are a little bit looser, but still using the shapes. There's Harry himself, that was from quite a while ago, and lots of people have been doing that. Please do use the hashtag, Drawing with Billy. Uh, people on social media have been sharing and contacting me with their drawings, with what they've been doing during this time, and it's been absolutely fantastic to encourage people. But do check out these videos, do like and subscribe, and do share, because people have been having a lot of fun. Now, here's the paper. Check out the link 
in the cards and the description for laying this grid down. It's a two centimeter grid, but I don't start up in this corner. The reason is I quite like this center line. Now, this is an A4 piece of paper. The little grid, uh, little video will show you how to lay this down in real time. It's only about 26 minutes long. And also the, the lesser grid that is on Queen Barb and things like that. Those kind of other uh, quicker videos. Now, I like the center line. So as it's just not off, you don't have to have the center line. Now, I just create these grids that you can see on the reference photos. <laughs> in image editing software. I use Pixelmator on a Mac, but anything, any image editing software, you can put lines on in the places, pull rulers up, set it to centimeters, you can set this up. It's that simple if you want to do your own. Now, in the banner are the actual markings. So we've got going across, this is A4 paper. So it's 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters down the side. And we've got this kind of five millimeter border around the edge. And then we've got the increments going over 25, 45, 65, 85, 105, which is the center, 125, 145, 165, 185, 205 across the top. So 105 millimeters is 10.5 centimeters. So <clears throat> most rulers in the UK have the millimeters on. That's why I talk in millimeters, not centimeters. People have asked in the comments which has been great again all the way down the side two centimeter grid now the reason i use this is it helps and again the reason why i use how to draw anything part one using shapes you can just start straight away on this grid and just go straight in and draw the line but the reason i put the shapes in at first is it gets you used to using the right kind of tools to get a portrait down as quickly as possible. So you can then develop hand and eye coordination to not need the grids, but then you still need to put the shapes in. You have to put construction lines down that help you to build the portrait. Now I may do one where just on the grid, I just go straight in with the line. That's something for the future that we might actually do, but that's why I put these shapes down first and this is going to be great because it'll show you that you can do a portrait of a friend, a loved one, anyone. And it doesn't matter whether it's a famous person, a troll, or someone lovely like Tom and the team at YouTube that give us this opportunity to actually share all this creativity with everybody. So now we are going to get on with drawing Tom. So this is just a nice, simple portrait. The same as anyone else, Ariana Grande, they're all simple portraits. So on the center line at the 105, we are going to just put a mark on and it's pretty much right on the 25 line. And it's a bit like doing dot to dot. And then we come down to the 65. Oh, and I also put these lines on very dark so that you can actually see them. Uh, you don't need to do that as dark because it's hard to rub them out afterwards. But this is just so as you can actually see. And then I draw all of these other lines on uh, quite dark as well so that you can see the underdrawing and the construction. So I'm just drawing a horizontal line over and we just need to curve this over and we can see it goes down through there, we've got a nice little simple triangle and we can, here we've got a rectangle that comes down the side of Tom's head. And that's going to come down to just at the top of the 125 line. And so here we've just got a simple triangle, a uh, triangle, long rectangle. And then we want a small little rectangle, which is the little bit of the side of his hair. But then we can just draw this line down to the 165, which is his side of his cheek. So I'm just drawing a line down. And then on this side now, coming over from the 85. So inside that little square we've got there you can see a little triangle that's made 
and that just comes over and then I want a little rectangle there little rectangle there and then we can just push that over that little bit more to the right of the 25 line so we've got a little rectangle there now on these two there we've got a triangle and then we can carry that diagonal line up and over and you can see how there we've got the top of Tom's hair now it's actually just underneath that top line so I'm just drawing a little flat line for the very crest of the top of Tom's hair at the top of his head but just using very very quick simple shapes we've just put in the main form of Tom's hair and just down the left hand side of his face now his ear comes down below the 165 line little line over but you can see there's it's a if it carried on that down that's a bit of a triangle with a flat line at the bottom then coming down to the 225 line from the, where the bottom of his ear is we've got a diagonal line comes over there and this is all you're using these reference points for another diagonal line it just helps to quickly diagonal line this is his collar coming around little u-shape and then we want his neckline going up through two squares into the third and then the side of his cheek comes out and curves up and there using just the grid shapes we've got those simple outline shapes put in now here we've just got so we come down so I'm just putting a little rectangle there that's the toggle same for the toggle of his top on that one goes down and just a nice simple curve this is like the edge of his hoodie top collar on his top it's a bit like a banana now again just simple diagonal lines now coming off the back of his shoulder this is above the 205 line we can just curve this down and that's the line going off to the back of his shoulder now Tom's nose will start with his actual nose and we've got it it's right on the 105 line and it's above the 165 so it's about here and we just want to come across and you can see it goes across those two squares and it comes up above the 125 so I'm just drawing a triangle and we can put a line down the center divide the triangle and you, because you can see you've got a strong highlight in the shadow on this side as opposed to on the other side now his left eye I'm just marking where the points are I'm just putting a little rectangle in then corner of his eye socket just a little rectangle going there now his eyebrow which is up on the 105 line I've got a rectangle going across the top and then a tiny little triangle off the side that just comes down now Tom's right eye again I'm just looking and you can see that got that little rectangle and that's going to be where we'll put and again you, you can't even just go inside that and just put a nice little oval shape and that's going to be Tom's eye and then you want the circle inside but just putting the rectangles in gives you the actual construction of where you need to put the curved lines so again 
we want this little oval like a, a rugby ball shape. And then we want the U coming down, it comes down underneath, that curves up. And then we want his pupil and iris, centre of his eye. And then above the 105, we've got his right eyebrow. And then we want a little triangle there on the back. Now, we've got a rectangle there where we can see the shadow. And we can just indicate rectangle across the top where we've got the fold, the upper eyelid going to into the eye socket. A couple of lines underneath. And there we've got a rectangle for the lower bags under, uh, I always call them bags, they just call bags under people's eyes, uh, the folds and the lower eyelid. Here we've got a little triangle. Now, there we've got a little rectangle because we can see that we're going to have different shape. Now, underneath his nose, here we've got a little triangle that's the center of Tom's nose. So I'm just putting a little V in. And then we've got a bigger V that you can see here. This is the shadow caused by Tom's nose. V making another triangle underneath. Now his lips, they're above the 185 line. So I'm drawing a rectangle in just very quickly now coming off the side of his nose we've got the crease line I'm just indicating where the lines are then we've got this shadow that's going to be a little rectangle and then on this side we've got triangle of shadow which will be the top of his lip. Now the bottom lip curves and just curves up a little bit towards where the edge of his mouth is. Now I'm resting my left hand on top of my right hand and it just allows me to kind of pivot from my shoulder rather than resting my hand on the paper which will also smudge. So you can do that. You can actually put a piece of paper down and that's absolutely fine because I'll be using a piece of paper to protect it very presently. So now we've got a little U, the centre of the top lip and then that curves over inside the rectangle and then we want the top curving down comes right the way out and then the edge of his mouth comes all the way over and here we've got a little rectangle of shadow again and another one there now his top lip comes over and then we've got here to the on the 125 line we've got underneath we've got a little rectangle which is that shadow now here we've got the bottom of his chin and that comes down just above the 225 line and you can see we've got a triangle of shade there and that's a shape that we can use and utilize now Again, here we've got a kind of little V, so you can imagine a triangle as that comes off up the side of his cheek. Then we've got the shadow, just slightly curved. So it's like kind of a rectangle, but just slightly curve it. And we can curve it at the top. And I'm just going to indicate that big patch of freckles there. One there. Now, down underneath his chin, 
we've got another simple shadow. Now we've got the edge of his chin here. Little triangle there, rectangle on the edge. Again, you can see this is very, very simple blocking in shapes, just making sure that everything's in the right place and the right proportions. And then we'll start and then we can go over the top of it uh, and really build up. In fact, I'm just going to I've got a little triangle for his ear inside there and then a little rectangle. That's the kind of entry to his ear canal. And this is how I just use shapes and then we build up on top of that with the outline. So anyway, that's getting basic shapes down that we can then build the portrait on top of. Now, I am going to use a piece of paper to stop me from smudging the drawing that I've got down already. Now, we're going to start putting the outline in and we're going to start with Tom's left eye. Now, I will just say, because everyone is working at home and I do have to have my window open because it does get rather warm in my studio. I live in the loft and uh, I get to know what the turkey feels like at Christmas in the oven sometimes. But uh, of course, we have lots of people out <laughs> doing lots of stuff. So you may I say, I don't know uh, how much you can actually hear in the background, but there's lots of birds tweeting because it's... Uh, yeah, they've all got young now, so it's quite quite pleasant outside in that regard. But we do get people letting fly with grinders, chainsaws, <laughs> hammering away, kids playing and all kinds of stuff. So if you can hear that in the background, it's all lovely ambient noise. Part of the world that we now live in. Anyway, let's get on with Tom's eye. So here you can see where we've got Tom's eye. And we got the construction line underneath. Again, I'm using the trusty 2B pencil. I'm curving the line underneath. And it comes up and goes up there. And this is why we put the construction lines down. It helps you with your detail. So his tear duct is kind of right on the 125 line. And then the top kind of curves up a little bit. And then when it, before it curves down on this side, it's not perfectly straight, but it's more straight across there. So you put the kind of straight line in and then you can just slightly curve it. And then the crease from the corner of his eye comes just underneath the 125 line and goes across the 165 line. We can just extend that line underneath and then we've got the crease above the top, the fold in his upper eyelid. And I, I, I really love doing this. I love showing you these techniques and showing you in real time because you just get to see how a drawing is done. So now we're curving in Tom's, the outest part of Tom's iris. Now we've got the highlight here. Now we do seem to have quite a strong directional light. Now I'm going to copy this exactly. But you could move the highlight up and kind of put it up there and the same on this side and it would fit and kind of work in. You can change and manipulate things like that in your drawing, but I'm just showing you how you can use a reference shot and draw a portrait. Now, there I've just put a little circle in for Tom's highlight on his left eye. Now his pupil is kind of right in the center. I'm drawing that circle 
and then his iris is fairly dark but it's not as dark and we will go back over this and really darken it down so I'm just filling in being careful not to go over the paper where we put that highlight on so there we filled in the iris and now again this is the beauty of doing all of these different uh, drawings and pictures and different characters in that obviously like the old Dumbledore had lots of crease lines around his eye whereas Tom with his genetic makeup doesn't have the same kind of I mean like I'm I'm a wrinkled prune <laughs> yeah I, I am I have always been very very wrinkly and that's just the beauty of different people so it doesn't matter whether you have lots of crease lines or not it's adapting your drawing to fit the subject and the situation I'm just putting a little curve and a little C there for his tear duct and this is how you build up your drawing and putting these shapes in then allows you to because like if you've not got the solid lines it's like well what do I do and again it doesn't matter whether it's Ariana Grande or Queen Barb from the Trolls they are very soft it's using these shapes that then give you reference points to build from so here we can see we've got the side of his nose and this shadow is creating a shape for us that comes down so like you can see the crease line above the top of Tom's eye of the fold above his upper eyelid but then his lower eyelid there's no solid thick crease lines underneath but we can indicate where the shadow is we've got those shapes in that just needs to curve a little bit and then above his eye and you can see there it's like a C like a capital C shape nice and simple and that goes right up underneath his eyebrow at the top and it curves right the way over we've got like a kind of thinner eyebrow underneath that comes right the way down and this is the kind of edge of Tom's eye socket and joins this line here coming off the side of his eye and that's the curve and that's going to give us the shape to shade in now his eyebrow up above is slightly diagonal and again you can see where we put that shape in but it's it's not solid and thick so if you filled that in solid and thick it just would look very weird so what we do is inside the guidelines that we did we can just indicate and draw in the direction of the eyebrows hairs and that makes it look real so I'm coming down twisting the pencil so I kind of keep the sharp or as sharp a point as possible and you draw the hairs and that's how you fill it in but it looks real now we can draw those lines underneath the 105 line and then we've got again the shape like we've got this shape that comes down here we've got this shape that comes down off the top of his eye socket where his eyebrow is and you've got a slightly darker tone and you can see just a simple little shape so I'm just building that shape in and there you've already got one eye starting to look out of the page at you so now we're going to do Tom's right eye again starting with the tear duct right in the corner kind of just goes up a little bit and then we've got the top part just curves over his eye and then we've got this pointed C right in the corner of his eye that comes down now that curves 
just nice and slightly. <clears throat> so I'm just going to sharpen my pencil. I am losing too much of the point there. Now, the curve underneath comes round. And you can see it joins spot on the 105-125 line. So we can just curve that out slightly and join that right the way underneath. And then we've got this lovely fold right in the corner of his eye. Now, you can see there, we've got a slightly darker line where the edge of his eye joins the side of his nose. And there's a bit of a little triangle of shade there that we can build up. And if you look, the top of it does come up about to there. So you can even do your own little dot to dot. It's like a, it's like a little segment, a cheese segment. And you can see there's a little curve at the bottom. And we'll build that shadow up. Now, Tom's right eye inside. We've got the highlight that's just above the 125. And it goes into his iris. And it's just a really nice, long... line of brightness now the edge of his eye is there and that's just a little c and the top and bottom of his eye are covered by his eyelids so we've got to see that leaves that little triangle there now the right hand side of his eye the two need to match you can see it goes over the highlight that little bit And then we can put the darker pupil in inside. And then we can darken the iris down around it. But don't go as dark. Now again, we don't have big solid creases. But we've got this crease line just on the corner. And then we've got a nice shape of highlight going up in this tone up towards his eyebrow. And then we've got the shadow that goes and joins over the top of that triangle. We've got the shade coming down. We can see the shape of his eye socket creating the shadow there. So I'm just indicating where the lines are. If it would be a you know a solid shadow into a solid crease. Now again, his right eyebrow. We're going to do the same. We've got right in the centre. We've got a darker set of hairs coming out because they are in the shadow, but we're doing them within the shapes that we actually made. And going in the direction that the hairs would actually grow. Just twisting the pencil, keeping the point sharp, curving down. And again, when I sharpen my pencil, you did hear I have an electric pencil sharpener. Uh, I, I have not had one for very long. After 40 years of drawing, you would think I would have had one a lot earlier before. You can spend a lot of time sharpening your pencil. But I'm trying to do these lessons as quick as I can. So... Not having to grab a sharpener and then sharpen it, it's just great being able to stick a pencil in and have it sharpened. So there we've got that right eyebrow in. <clears throat> and now we have two eyes staring out at us. Now we're going to come down and we're going to draw Tom's nose. Now first, right on the edge of this triangle, you can C, we have a C shape. It's literally a capital C. And you can just draw that in nice and simply. And that's right on the 105 line. And then we want that will come underneath. 
and then here where we've got this kind of U shape for the bottom of Tom's nose, we can draw his right nostril in, just putting a little oval in, slightly more pointed at the top, it's not a perfect oval, and that curves across, just kind of past the halfway line, and then curves back. I'm just going to fill that in, not too dark. Now, the centre of his nose curves down and then curves back up and his right nostril is slightly higher on the diagonal, slightly higher than his left nostril. And you can see how the underneath part of the back is also, and you can see our construction line, it just goes up towards the this side of the paper a little bit. So I'm going to draw and it curves down kind of across the halfway point of this square. And that curves down there and then we can put that slightly darker part in and we've got this little bit of shadow going around the edge. Now, as we had a C on this side, we've got a D on this side. And we see right by that corner, it's just inside. So if you just simply drew, and you can see there, like the back line would be a kind of capital D shape, but then make it a little bit taller, 45 degree angle going up. That is the actual shape that you want. So you've got the edge of the nose, we need that to come up and it does just kind of come up about there. So I went a little bit low, so I'm just going to come in quickly and remove that for you. But we've got the shadow line underneath. It would have just connected to that, but just so as you can see, I've just removed that little bit. So the nose curves down and underneath. And then we've got a nice dark shadow that goes up right to the crease in that corner. And that's the shadow that comes down. Then we've got the crease on the side of his mouth that comes over his cheek down to the side of his mouth. So we've got the line right in that goes over, cuts through the 165 line, and then kind of comes back, the crease does, and then curves around. And you can see there we've got that shape on the side of his cheek that we're going to fill in. So now we're going to do Tom's mouth. So we're starting from the 105 line. And we're going to curve over where we've got the construction lines. We're going to curve down. And then his lip isn't level with the 185. It goes up, it starts to go up. So we're curving that line up, comes across, and it comes pretty much to the 145 line, and then goes up in a little triangle shape there. Now, the side of his mouth where the, between the top and bottom lips, We've got this little wiggle shape here. So he's got a little U there, goes up and then goes down right to the corner and the edge of his mouth. And coming back, we're going to come across, this is pretty horizontal, to about halfway. And then we've got a little U shape for the center of his top lip. That curves up and then we go back on the diagonal down to this corner. And that curves across and goes right to the corner onto the top of the 185 line. Now Tom's upper lip, we've got a slight curve for the centre and then it curves right over 
to the edge there and then curves down there now the crease of his cheek going up to his nose it's not as defined on this side just the angle so we've got a much softer line so I'm not going to detail it too much but here we can see we've got a triangle of shadow that helps with Tom's little smile and then we can indicate the, the lighter part there and the darker part there and then we've got this fantastic shadow cast by his nose where we put this little V made this triangle underneath. So you've got a triangle at the top, triangle underneath. But it's not a perfect triangle, but you see the shadow of his nose. So there is a light that's directing down here as well as something that's coming this way that's giving these little highlights on his eyes. Casting this great strong shadow. And this is a bit like uh, in the SAS Who Dares Wins, Billy Billingham. Uh, he had strong like shadows like this cast by outdoor light but this is two directional lights inside a room and it's causing us some very interesting shapes so there we've got that shadow shape underneath tom's nose and we can see we're now getting a stronger face looking out of the page back at us Again, I draw all of these lines a lot darker so that you can actually see them. And again, like we're going to do Tom's chin now. So we've got the curve that comes down. And it curves across. And this is kind of pretty horizontal. Just before the 105 line and then it just curves up. And we need this curve then coming up into the shadow shape that we've got coming up into his right cheek. Now here we've got a highlight so I'm just going to do a kind of sausage shape there and that'll be where that highlight is and then underneath we've got a shadow that comes down to below the 205 line and this is where his jawline would be. You can see we've got a little construction line. This is where his jawline is going underneath his skin to the back from the front of his jaw to the back of his jaw from his chin going backwards. Now here we can see we've got a nice little shape where there's going to be some shadow. We've got another little crease, a couple of creases there that will need some shadow detail attention then underneath his lip we've got this darker shadow we've got the little rectangle little curve going over the top and it comes out and then we've got this triangle on his chin again here we can curve down bring this curve down and follow the lines and these will just be guides to help us filling in the shadow now we can do this on his nose as well so we've got all of this shadow on the right hand side of his nose goes up and then we've got the folds underneath his lower eye we want to indicate that one there within this square we've got the slightly lower one and then we've got the shadow that comes right off from his nose. And then we've got the highlighted part of his cheek that comes over and comes down. That started to look really good, but we've only got the central part of his face in. Again, I'm just using the side of the pencil, just softly indicating where these shadow lines are. Are going to fill in side of his head here we've got those kind of freckle bits just indicating quickly then a shadow going up from the top of his head 
from the top of his eyebrow up into his hairline. And then we've got a lovely crease. You see it goes right through that point. I'm just resting my hand on top of the other and just pivoting backwards and you see my hand rocking. We can curve that over and then that comes down through there, one above the top, and this crease line comes down and then goes across there. Then we've got that highlight, we've got these interesting shapes. Now we've got a lot of just indicating where the shadows from the hair is going to be. And we've got a little upturn kind of triangle there. And this is all going to help with tones. That's looking pretty good. We're halfway there getting the outline actually down. Now, what will make this fully stand out is by getting the rest of the outline down. So we are going to start with the side of Tom's head. And so here we can see where we've got this line. We just need to bring that out a little bit. We need to, you can see it's not perfectly vertical with the grids. It's just, we've got a little curve slight curve that comes out comes down comes down to the 165 line goes under and then you can see his cheek starts to curve and then that comes right through this corner point here now, I'm just being very careful and following that curve down. And then you can see the side of his cheek just curves over. And there's a little bit of shadow, but his neck starts to come down just to the right of it. And that's pretty much on that, going through that centre line. And then it comes down and joins on about a third where we've got this construction line going down. So we can just slight curve on the neck because necks, you know, skin is fluid. It is stretched over muscle and sinew and bone and fat tissue and uh, all helping to create the shape. So it's not going to be absolutely flat. So always think there's just a slight little curve. And then we've got here we've got the shadow so I'm just going to indicate the shadow line we've got a triangle that comes over now I did that too high so we'll knock that line out in a bit so I'm just bringing the curves round for his top I'm just loosely indicating those now We've got here the bottom of his shirt, uh, the hem of his shirt that curves around at the bottom of the picture. And it's just got this nice U shape. There are a little highlight showing inside there. So I'm just curving and wiggling the lines. Just moving the paper out of the way. I'm resting my left hand on top of my right hand again, using it to help pivot rather than, again, you just develop the techniques you, you learn to know when you need to rest your hand on the paper to stop it from smudging, but then you can also utilise freer drawing lines. So this now curves around. Because when I did that, that's inside the curve of my hand. That's easy. But here, I'm using the pivoting rather than just doing little lines. And it just helps to get that fluid curve because it's against the natural curve of my wrist and fingers. So... That curves up. We've got this diagonal construction line. 
So this curves up and you can see it just goes above this little corner point. So I'm just going up above the point and the same on the next one curves up just above the corner point in that square and then it goes up again and we can see here where it comes right on the 45 line so I'm gonna follow it's gonna go a little bit wider get the curve goes up and then here it starts to go out and coming down from the point Then we've got his hoodie at the back that curves over curves down and that's just the quick general shapes now here we've got the cord of his toggle for coming out of his hoodie I'm just indicating that and the same here now We've got a finer point there, curves out, comes right the way down. Now, Tom's ear, we've got this shape that we actually put in at first. We can just draw that line a little bit closer and that'll help us. Now, the bottom of his earlobe just comes out a little bit just above the halfway point in that square and then kicks up through the 165 line and his ear goes lovely and diagonal out across here and then curves up it's just underneath the 125 line so curving down following that diagonal and there's the curve the bottom of his hair the back of his head and the bottom of the, his hairline just comes over the top of his ear. And then where the side of his ear joins his head, it curves out, comes down to about halfway, and then we've got that little crease line that goes up for that part inside his ear. Now we can see the entrance to his ear canal we can curve that shape, follow the diagonal up and join it. And if you want, you can just fill in a little bit of dark so as you know that that's the entrance to his ear canal. That's an area that you need to leave, uh, not leave highlighted so as you know where you're putting your shapes in. Now the fold of his ear, we've got here, we've got these little construction lines that make us this lovely little triangle. And it curves at the top where the fold is comes down to the 145 line this side it curves slightly crosses over and then curves around to the part where it connects with his earlobe at the bottom and then we've got a nice just a couple of little wiggly shapes inside there now Tom's hair we can see above the 65 line, it's just above there. Then it comes down, comes through the center. Now I'm just flicking, but I'm drawing these because his hair his hair's gelled. So it's not smooth and pulled tight uh, or, or brushed flat. So I'm not drawing a solid line. I'm just indicating the hair in the way it is and how it's gelled. And that's how you do hair. Always draw it in the way it is brushed, combed, pulled tight in a ponytail, whatever it is. And you, that way you can get more natural looking hair by doing your drawing lines in the direction that the hair is actually going. So again, I'm resting my left hand. It's not on the paper. On my right hand, it's just, you can see my fingers down there or the bottom of my hand and my fingers. So now we've got the same curving down here. And then that comes through 
we got that comes out there just through that corner point and we've got this kind of rectangle shape that comes down to about a third of the way through it's just a little bit fuzzy and then it starts to go down more horizontal and then that comes down and gets closer to his head and just curves underneath the 125 line now where it goes up you can see we've got a little bit of a triangle here on that construction line and the same as that curves across so now we're drawing this hairline in gently it curves across comes to the 105 center line and then his hair curves out and over and we've got another line there and you can see kind of three quarters of the way across the square you've got the hair coming down the side of his forehead and it kind of comes across a little bit diagonal again same on the third and I'm just doing little wiggly lines to help indicate and now we just want to indicate the hair at the top where it's going to be darker little triangle there hair in that square then we've got another one there another one there one two then back over here one two couple more lines and they will make these really you can see here we've got these really strong cast shadows off the hair coming down over on Tom's forehead now that's the complete outline down ready for us to start filling the shading in uh, but before we do that I need to rub out all of the construction lines and the grid lines again I put these on darker so that you can actually see me doing all of the working out but if you put them on with a 2H pencil again if you check out the laying down the grids video uh, you'll actually see me draw some lines with a 2H pencil and you just practically can't see them but I do these so that you can actually see what's going on now this is just a, a Mars plastic eraser by Stettler it's just one I've used for years that I really enjoy using and you get used to using certain materials uh, again I'm being careful because I've got lots of construction lines but it's getting a bit cluttered in there so I'm going to rub out quickly right around the edge of Tom's head and I do leave some of the lines on so that you can still see the grids but I just kind of rub it out a little bit you know, kind of makes it look a bit arty and that's pretty good that's all that lot down now down in the his top at the bottom we can really get rid of a lot of those down on his neck and this is quite a big thick and chunky rubber so it's great for big spaces and getting rid of large areas but when you've got like the close detail it can actually you can lose a lot of your drawing that you've done so I've just pulled a lot of that off but I've got the same rubber but in a kind of pen 
and you can just clean the end off by wiping it on your jeans or a towel I've got a bit of kitchen towel here as well kitchen towel an actual towel uh, not kitchen roll not paper but because this is like a pen I can actually get inside all of these wonderful construction lines that you've put down and we can remove the grid lines without actually losing our underdrawing. And that allows us then to actually fill in the tone without battling against all of these construction lines. Now, this is a tough rubber. And if you actually put the lines on with a very light a pencil and a light touch, you would be able to get rid of these really easily, even just using a very soft rubber uh, or a putty rubber. So again, getting rid of those lines inside his ear. And you can see I'm able to remove the grid lines while leaving a lot of our construction lines in place. But the picture is actually getting quite covered in lots of rubbings out, but we shall remove those in a minute. I can remove it from inside his lip. And that line right at the edge of his collar. Now, I brush this off. You could actually use uh, a little handheld vacuum if you've got one. But I actually brush these off just using a very old brush. This, this brush is maybe 30 years old now. It's 25, 30 years old. And I used to use it for painting varnish on, on oil paintings. Again, if you check out my uh, oil paintings and drawings time-lapse page, you'll see the oil paintings that I do that can take me up to a month to actually produce. Of motorcycle subjects. So there, we've removed a lot of I just swept that onto a piece of paper that I can put in the bin rather than to just tipping it on the floor now I can actually see now where I need to remove some more now I've got this electric sharpener but you can get these smaller rubbers in the top of little mechanical pens but again just like the uh, electric pencil sharpener this means I can do this very, very quickly, but much more accurately. To remove the lines on his face that I don't want to show through. as much as, as they would do if I couldn't remove them. But this is just a great little tool because I can just dab on and it removes without me having to really scrub into the paper. So I can get rid of those lines that are one there. That's the 205 line coming across his face. 185 shadow underneath his lip now that's looking pretty good I don't mind some being left on because it kind of looks arty and this is a lovely instructional video to help you guys with your drawing. So there, I'm just going to sweep those off again. And 
and there we have a complete outline of Tom down I'm just gonna reconnect a couple of lines where I had to go very close but that's about it and that's ready for us now we can now just start shading all of that in in the next section right now we're going to fill in a lot of tone across Tom and you can see we've got this highlight here this strong highlight so I'm just going to leave a little bit of that kind of crescent shape but we will use the putty rubber <laughs> to actually remove that highlight and make it stand out so now I'm using the side of the 2B pencil and we're just filling in all of Tom's skin just a general tone just to give us a, a simple base it doesn't matter I'm going just like lightly going over the side there that's absolutely fine again because of the lockdown and people staying at home and working at home you might hear I don't know if you can hear in the background uh, there's chicken squawking and all kinds of stuff people mowing the lawn uh, again I'm doing my best to keep the sound as good as possible but I do have to have the window open it gets pretty warm in my studio so there's the tone up his nose just filling in above the right eye actually filling in the eye now down the right cheek and right ear again I don't twist the pencil because as it gets flatter underneath you get a nice softer tone and it's just easier to smooth out again you can just continue to sketch like this or you can smooth out the actual tone and that's what we're going to do in a moment and we can then just fill in Tom's chin now his hair is very very dark I'm just putting a couple little squiggles in his hoodie and now I'm going to fill in his hair Again, I've not twisted the pencil at all I'm using the flattened edge now because I'm just filling in his hair shape complete I'm not aiming to get any kind of hair definition so I'm just filling in the entire shape with the 2B pencil as quickly as I can I'm just going to indicate that and because there's no total bright highlight I can just go a little bit darker and we can fill in all of his hair now I'm just indicating quickly again just using the flat part of the pencil because the light is coming from this kind of direction we can see that we've got the darker shadows down the right hand side of Tom's face so I'm just looking filling in all of his ear we've got this nice little curve a lot of this highlight here and then we've got the shadow crease 
coming down the side of his cheek and the shadow coming down his neck and underneath his chin and you can see we're just getting a little bit more tonal definition then completely underneath his chin and then the right hand side of his chin underneath his lip and we've got the right hand side of his mouth the triangle of that shade that shadow shape underneath his nose the right hand side of his nose And we've got the shade over in the top part of his right eye socket. And underneath his right eye. And then the same where we've got the tone. A little bit of a shape there on his left eye. And then this nice shape on his left cheek. Now there, that's very, very quick, soft tone that we've put in. Now I'm just getting the kitchen roll again, just folding it to a clean part. And this is just something that I like to do. You can just build up your sketch lines, just working in layers, kind of cross hatching. But this first tonal layer, I actually like smoothing it all out. And it just kind of presses the pencil into the paper. I just like the way that it actually looks when you then put pencil back on top of it again. Smoothing out the ear, the right cheek, and because it's so thin, in fact, I've just indicated, you know, just push some of the pencil across his lips because we didn't put some tone in there. But where it's that little bit darker, you can just press on. And you can see already we're getting a little bit more three-dimensionality underneath his chin, up the side of his cheek, that shadow there on the side. Now again, I'm now just completely smoothing that tone that we put in his hair. And that's pretty good. Now I'm going to come in with my putty rubber, just pinching it. This is the clean one. Remember, I've got the slightly older one that's very dirty, and that's because it's picked up a lot of pencil already. And we are doing now, just pulling that to a point, and just pulling the pencil out on the highlights on his eyes. Now, Again, I'm just I'm not making a sharp point, I'm now just softening that down a bit, making it long so that you can just see a bit. And the very strong highlights where his nose on his nose are, it's down the side, on his left eye, I'm just dabbing. Then we've got highlight on his forehead just dabbing and increasing that back to the paper because it's so thin you can do that and go get back to the paper relatively easily corner of his right eye top of the lower eyelid 
little dab in the corner and then his right cheek down by his nose underneath his and top lip and bottom lip and on the side of his chin now that allows us to build the tone up around it but we know where our stronger highlights are sometimes I just save that till the very very end but it's worth doing to just have those little reference points now I have noticed actually in the highlight on his cheek I've got a bit of the vertical line right in the middle of like a highlight on his cheek and so I've just gently dabbed those out otherwise it'd be a kind of bit of bad visual noise so I'm going to come in this is the 2B pencil again but it's in my pencil extender and we're just going to start on Tom's eyes I'm resting my left hand on top of my right hand and this is sharpened and so we're just starting to build up the tone gradually around Tom's left eye so just in the shape of his eyebrow and you got that top of his nose got a little bit more dark in between the two eyebrows then right down in the corner and because we've got so many really nice soft tones you just go around a crease above his left eye and you just build up the tones slowly and just keep looking a little bit of shade there leaving the highlighted part on the top And then a little bit of shade on the side coming down his cheek and this is what you do just carefully I mean I'm going I'm actually sketching quite quickly but you just need to build the tone up area by area little by little that's that nice shade right underneath his eye right in the corner coming down now actually in his eyeball we've got his upper eyelid is creating a nice shadow at the top so we filled that in but you can see already how just by filling that little area in we've got more definition starting on Tom's eye and we're just going to pull this eye out quite quickly and then we'll start on the right one and as I say before in so many other videos it's easier to add tone than it is to take it away so you just build up slowly little by little and it increases and intensifies so when we actually do the dark of Tom's eye properly it will help all of this fall into place and then when we put the highlights on it'll really lift his eye out 
So here in this shadow, we've got a little curve and then a little curve coming down the highlight. We need to curve that around his tear duct. And then we've got much darker shadow on the upper eyelid just inside the side of his eye, eyeball. Now the curve above we can give that some stronger definition but just carefully we can bring that right the way down to where this corner then creases out. Got a little crease line there. That's his eye starting to really come together. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to rest my hand on the paper to stop me from smudging it because we're going to really detail up the dark. So now just sharpen my 4B pencil and the B grades are for black. Now the higher the number, the softer they are, and you can make black easier, darker tones much easier. And because this tone is so rich around his eyes, I'm just fuzzing it slightly. Rather than really pressing on with the 2B, it's just easier to do it with a 4B pencil. Now, oh, the tip just snapped off. I've just pressed on that a little bit too hard. I want the dark on his iris. Be very careful to leave the paper on that highlight though. Just going to sharpen it again. Because I do want the sharp tip. Now we've got the curve of his eye, bottom eyelid, coming around, right in the tear duct in the corner. That's very dark and I'm softening the edge off. And then the shadow right in the corner of his eyeball is quite dark too. And we can really intensify the upper eyelid eyelashes that have given us this nice black line. Now, the edge of his iris coming around past the highlight comes down. We can really press on hard for the pupil in the centre. Then we've got the dark right at the top, underneath the upper eyelid. But then you can see we just need to lighten it off the bottom part of the iris so I'm not pressing on as hard. And then around the actual highlight that's going to be quite black, just a little black line. And there you can see Tom's eye really starting to lift off. So Now for where it comes right over, I've sharpened it, but I'm just doing it. I'm not pressing on too hard so that the edge is soft. I'm just filling in that line going down to the corner. Just making sure it's that little bit softer. And it just looks nice. 
and then the inside of his upper eyelid touching his eyeball is a little bit darker and then we can just build up the shadow tone right in the corner and then going up underneath the upper eye lid and the eyelashes and then just fill the tone in carefully now you can see the eye is really coming together and looking off the page at us and so now we can do the same for the crease that comes down just soften the edge and then the curve that goes around and crease in the upper eyelid how that comes over curve right in the corner again I'm just letting the weight of the pencil press down to create the slightly darker tone that I need now I'm just leaving a highlight I'm just bringing the tone underneath the lower eyelid again just adding a little bit filling in the shadow where it's closer to the nose because that's where it's at its more darker point and there you can see already that's really starting to leap off the page and look a lot more lifelike so now if we do the same for Tom's right eye we can create the very dark shadow in his upper eyelid where his eyelashes are soften it off as we curve it down the edge of the eye is coming down to the highlight above and below and then we want right around the highlight that dark line and we're filling in Tom's pupil the left hand side of his iris again where that curves over going down to the corner of his eye we can just gently increase the tone making it darker right the way down to the crease on the corner and inside his lower eyelid comes down under and at the bottom of his iris underneath his pupil now over the top that's much darker Ooh. just hear the tip snap off again and the bottom is that a little bit lighter if you draw lines out from the center of the pupil that's the kind of way that an iris's pattern works and you can increase it and just allow a little bit of lightness to stay there now right in the corner I'm just twisting the pencil so I've got a slight sharper point but because I want it to go soft as well it doesn't have to be absolutely pin sharp so we've got that crease right in the corner of his eye which is very dark and then we can bring the tone around under the lower eyelid 
Now the shadow caused by the top is darker all the way across. But right in this corner it's very dark anyway. So I'm just filling that tone in. And then right in the corner it's much darker. And underneath the top of the eyelid. Now, on this side, we need to match it with the left eye. Just put a little bit of tone in, leaving the highlight showing. Now, eyebrow above, just Again, twisting the pencil so I've got a sharper line. And it's allowing me to indicate the shape and form of his eyebrow inside those shapes that we already put in. Now, just above it, we've got a kind of shadow shape that's going all the way down and around. You see that just helps to accentuate his eyebrow. Now again the same on this side. I'm just indicating quickly. Some of Tom's eyebrows. And then right in the corner. You can indicate where we've got the shadow where the creases where the corner of the tear duct is going up over top of his eye and then again underneath just a little line showing the highlight leaving that little bit of light that we will accentuate more with the putty rubber when we need to put the highlights in. So now I'm just indicating a little bit more shadow. See that shape kind of a right angle shape there. You can just build that up little by little coming right the way over to his nose. And then just a little bit more tone coming down the curve of that upper eyelid. And that's looking pretty good so far. And just keep building the tone up. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm having an absolute blast. Now we're going to do Tom's nose and here because we've already got the nostril already in place we are just filling in the shape. So I'm just pressing on and it's again you've got this little curve to the top, top part and then it curves down to the corner it's not a complete oval you know it's like a triangle with rounded corners but it's off center here and you see it's not level it's not horizontal so it's slightly pointing down again I'm using the edge of the pencil just very carefully softening the edge now on this side <clears throat> on his left nostril we've got the curve that comes down slightly and I'm just softening it off around the edge then in fact I'm just going to sharpen the pencil again 
we've got you can see the <clears throat> top part of his nose on either side this side is slightly high and we've got that nice shape but I've even though I've sharpened the pencil I'm just softly pressing on so that it's not a crisp tight line but we've got the dark where we need it coming around that that D but again it's a 45 degree angle going up there and then we can just soften that off right into that corner and then we've got the edge of his mouth the the crease the the edge of the crease coming down down to the side of his mouth just indicating that line I'm not twisting the pencil so I've got the nice flat that's just happened there <clears throat> where we've done the right and the D on the left hand side of his nose on the right hand side of the picture talking opposite is rather interesting glad it's not reversed in a mirror And there we're just indicating that crease a little bit now on the left hand nose where we've got the C I'm going to do the same thing curving the dark down but very gently and this comes right under you can see how it, if it went right underneath the center of his nose those that would be connected so we can just increase that and then feather it out nicely so as we've got that soft edge and then when we increase the shadow <clears throat> all around it's that'll just meld in so even though we've got those very very stark lines we're going to increase the intensity of the shadows all around and building up that tone is what will give it the solid three-dimensional definition but it's like here we've got quite a strong line underneath his nose and when we build up the shadow underneath that'll meld in because we don't want a strong like we've got dark here line right underneath Tom's nose so I'm just softening it down putting that softer edge on now <clears throat> the same for the center of the lips these are the real dark parts on the center of Tom's face and then obviously we've got the hair at the top then we've got the hoodie at the bottom but I might not do that again this is a bit like when we did Billy Billingham of SAS who dares wins I didn't do the shirt it was just enough to do the face now the darkest point is kind of in the center so we've got that nice little U shape and it comes up and then comes over to the side of his lips curve on the corner and then you've got the crease off to the side again the crease off to the side I'm just doing nice and soft and then coming down the right hand side of his lips we've got a curve that goes over and then we come out on the side nice little soft edge And then right in the corner we've got that dark as well and again I'm just circling gently just to give me that blurred edge and then his lip is much darker on this corner where the shadow is and you can see how they've got the shadow line coming down from his nose and it creates this 
dark patch of shadow on the side of his mouth. And again, that looks like visual noise now. It's staring off the page because we've got to build the rest of the tone up. And this is, and I know I keep mentioning the Mark Billy Billingham, but he was outdoor light. And the shadows were strong, but so fantastic and subtle at the same time. So now we want to just fill in the tone of his lips. And I'm using the pencil where it's flattened down so as I'm not getting scratchy lines. It's a bit lighter here, just, just in the centre to the right of the U. I'm just filling that tone in a little bit and I'm filling the tone and going right the way across. But leaving that little light patch there. Now, here on his bottom lip, <clears throat> I'm indicating the kind of lines that we get in lips. And I'm just going down, curving them over. And then I can build on top of them. And here off the centre part of his top lip, we've got that shadow extended. But we've got a little kind of highlighted bit here. So I'm just filling that in a little bit lighter than the shadow that's coming off. Now his bottom lip. Just filling the tone in a little bit more there. It is just this little bit darker under this centre part. Then going off up to the corner. And because it's getting flatter, I can really soften the dark line in between his two lips. You get that really nice soft edge. Then if I turn the pencil over and get the sharp edge, I can really accentuate inside. I just flipped it back over 180 degrees again to get that softer edge. So now we have <clears throat> basic tones in, but detail as well of the eyes, nose and lips. So that's looking pretty good. And we're now going to go back to a 2B pencil. So I am using the one in my pencil extender. And we're going to build up a lot of the tones. And I'm resting the pencil on my right hand just so as I've got that little bit of freedom. So here now we've got this rectangle shape next to his nose. And then increasing the tone underneath the bottom of his nose. And remember, on this, on the curves underneath the nose, you've got a reflected highlight on a lot of skin. So don't go right up to your line. Just go close and then you can just feather a little bit of the pencil. Now, on his nose, up to the centre. And then we've got the shadow coming down the right hand side of his nose. Coming off to the corner. And then the crease in the corner of his eye. Coming down. Just intensify that a little bit. Under the bag under his right eye. And 
And this is this is what you do now. You just start building up the tone little by little. You're kind of cross hatching, but also you know filling in nice shading parts. This is that bit that was like the kind of cheese shape. Triangle with a crescent at the bottom. Then coming over, we can intensify into the corner of his eye socket. And I'm just going to do this really quickly all over. You can see already we've got better three dimensionality appearing already by his nose. Now, underneath his nose, we've got this great triangle of shade but then it comes right over the side of his lip and down this side so you can fill in a good amount of tone and then you can come back up right underneath his nose underneath the nostril it's a lot darker and this is where we've got that slightly darker set of tones that are going to start giving us the definition. So light it on underneath the left nostril. That tone curves down. And dark right underneath. And now on his cheek, if you squint, you can kind of see the shape. And it's a bit there, it's like a D. The shade outside of that line, it's a bit like a capital D shape. And if you just squint, you can see these shapes a little bit simpler, and then you can fill them in. And then just feather the edge as it comes over his lip a little bit. And going up underneath the left eye, over the nose. And then right down the centre of his nose, we've just got a little bit of tone and then we've got that strong highlight. And then next to the strong highlight, we've got, it's all right, I've got bits of graphite on, so there we go. Because there were bits of pencil, when that 4B snapped, little bits of pencil were left and I knew if I'd have drawn over those, it would have scratched into the paper, hence me just brushing those away carefully. So here you can see this highlight that comes up over his nose and it curves across and you can kind of see how it's kind of level just above the highlight in his eye. So you can fill that tone in a little bit. Now I'm really pressing on lightly and I'm just letting the pencil do the work. And you can hear the pencil just going backwards and forwards and it's filling that lighter tone in on the side of his nose. And I'm resting the, my left hand on my right hand and just letting the pencil, I'm just guiding the pencil, I'm not putting any pressure on. And that's how you build up and increase the tone in the lighter areas. So again, the same now up on the top of his forehead. Got a little bit more of a darker line coming around there and then up the side. Underneath that eye. down the side of his cheek and 
Now here we've got two kind of crease indentations on the side of his cheek. So I'm really using the soft side of the pencil to put those in. Then we've got a little bit of a highlight and then the shadow comes down the side of his cheek underneath his chin. But we've also got it just going over his chin as well so it doesn't matter about just going over that line there too much. Again, just keep looking at the reference and you're filling in the tone underneath. Coming down his neck, that shadow caused by his hoodie. Going up to where his Adam's apple is. Now here we've got a crease that comes right around in his neck. So we can indicate that crease line coming round and going up by the hoodie. That's really starting to come together quite nicely. Now we've got the shadow on the right hand side of his cheek going up on the right hand side of his chin underneath the lip Coming right round to where the lip is. And then we've got his jawline. Got a little bit more intense dark here. And this is the thing, you just look for the patches of darker tone and just keep going back over just keep looking going back over it's like there already I can see now I need to increase that down there a little bit and we're starting to look really really nice just getting more and more three-dimensionality now we can come up the side of his head and his ear, we can just go all the way over because we've got this shadow now all the way down. And we can just increase that backwards and forwards really quickly. Again, just think about how you're sketching. If you were unsure about sketching this quickly, just get a piece of paper and make marks, make shading marks, tonal marks. You can do this while you're watching television. You can just fill a page with tone completely. So here now we're going all the way up his forehead. Right the way up, I'm not twisting the pencil because I'm getting this nice flat tone coming off. And we want now underneath the hairline On the front of his forehead, we've got this great lovely shadow that's coming across. And coming down there, down the side of his forehead. And it goes darker next to the ear. You can see that we've got a lovely little bit of tone coming down next to his ear. And then here we've got a little bit of tonal shape following the curve of his cheek. And we can just fuzz next to the hairline. And then when you come to the actual ear, we've got nice dark shape in that triangle where the hair covers. Just need to leave that little fold of skin where the ears right next to his cheek. But just darken it slightly. 
Then we've got the entry to his ear canal. Got a triangle of tone there, and then you've got the actual dark bit. So I'm increasing the dark section ever so slightly, and we'll go back into that with the 4B pencil to really darken it more. Little bit of tone at the top. And then that comes down underneath his ear, earlobe at the bottom. And there you can see we're just getting more and more definition coming into the face by adding tone slowly. Now, if you want to do hyper-real pencil drawings, you have got to spend days and days and days. I'm giving you the basic techniques. But if you want to do hyper-real pencil portraits, you've got to spend hours and hours and hours. And in my portraits playlist, the time lapses, the ones of people like... Uh, Harry and Meghan and Jenna Coleman and Ed Sheeran, they, they are a lot longer than this. The Harry and Meghan one was a few days, so and, and I don't cast myself as a total hyper-real artist, but I like drawing realistically. But if you want to do the full-on hyper-real, you've got to go for a long, long time. So now again, we're just adding more tone. We've got that nice shade on his cheek, that nice shape. Coming down under the chin. Here we've got the shade going up underneath his mouth. Again, it's just a question of building up your tone and making your tone where there's no hard edges it's your tone and the placement of the shapes of it that will actually create your definition so there you can see we've just got more already definition of the chin coming down underneath onto his neck And so we're just filling that in nicely and quickly. And again, underneath his lower lip and coming down the side of his left of his chin. Now I'm going to come in again with the kitchen roll. I'm just going to, I'm just looking and I'm just pushing this tone that I've just put down. I'm going in really the same direction of the pencil line. So like that uh, darker part going up to his cheek just softens the edge off. Going right the way up. Now, for the lighter parts, because I've just got so much uh, pencil on there, I'm folding it over so I've got a clean piece. And that way, I won't be smudging too much. See, I'm softening that there. Now already that's that's looking absolutely lovely. We just soften that off quite nicely. Now what will make a huge difference now is by putting in Tom's hair. So we're back in with a 4B pencil. 
and I'm carefully resting my hand, left hand on top of my right arm. But I'm now carefully filling in and you can see there's a little bit of highlight down here. So I'm filling in, I'm going to fill in Tom's hair and I'm also trying not to splinter the pencil like I did, you, you did a few times earlier. So that if I get a nice flat area of the pencil it will fill in much darker. Now I might even end up using an 8B. Though the 4B should probably do us for what I'm after on this particular drawing. So like things on Sirius. And I think on Sirius Black I did use the 8B. But on Voldemort I didn't. I think I used just a 2B and a 4B on that. And I used lots. I mean it disappears. The pencil will just disappear really quickly. So there now I've just filled in that edge. Now I haven't been careful at all when I've been smudging or anything else. And so now I'm just using the tip of the pencil to indicate the hairs at the edge of Tom's hair on the left hand side and you can see how this comes up the side right in line with his eye we got a nice little curve that comes around we just got fuzzy hair coming out and then just above the top it's kind of just above the upper eyelid there is where it starts to go and you just got that shadow caused by the hair and it's just soft so I'm just softening off the edge of that shadow as it goes up and then curves over Where that goes over the top now Tom's hair is kind of you can see the lines here that are coming down so I'm just putting pencil strokes on in the direction of his hair where it's kind of got his product in or his gel that's giving him those kind of spiked highlights And this is using the pencil lines to create the impression of the hairstyle that you are after. I get regularly asked, you know, will I do a tutorial on hair? Well, every single portrait that I do, if the person has got hair, you get a lesson on hair. And every single one is different. Again, if you want this to be photographic, you have got to go really slow. So here... I'm bringing the dark over and I'm literally pivoting from my shoulder and pressing on using the weight of my body right the way down my arm pressing onto the pencil and again I've been careful to not snap the tip but to let it soften down quickly and but gradually enough so as not to break so just get zigzagging backwards and forwards but in the direction of the hair is giving me that kind of shape and pattern that I actually want to indicate Tom's hairstyle and we've got no incredibly sharp highlights And as you come over the side, so you've got some highlights over here on the top, but as you come further over this side, you get less and less. Now, where I've gone already, I'm just going to come in with the very dirty putty rubber. 
and just pull in some of those highlights but it won't pull it back right to the bare paper and you just get those nice tones and I'm just dabbing that bit on the side of his head smudge it with my finger and that's starting to give us the fuller shape that we actually need for Tom's hair at the top of his head and the tones that we actually want so now very gently using the side of the pencil to fill in everywhere because there's no white highlights right the way up to the top of his head now I'm just fuzzing off the back at the top now I'm actually holding the paper down with my right hand with the piece of paper protective paper as well because it means if I, if I press on too hard and just keep going backwards and forwards I could actually dislodge the paper from the masking tape now all the way down the side of his head here we've got the edge of the hair so I'm putting in the, the kind of mid darker tone right next to his skin where the hair joins and then we can just press on hard but I'm still going in the direction the way the hair grows and we're just filling in all of the shape up to that shadow line and then right to the back of his head coming down over the top of his ear and we can fill in this black now I really like pressing on hard and this goes back to when I was learning to draw because I'd go and draw from life and so I'd, be, I'd have to get the effect quickly and this is just personal preference some people use for the black areas like this charcoal pencil because it's flat and matte but I actually like the bird shiny effect that you actually get from the pencil now filling in all of this hair quite quickly it's obviously like filled in a lot of the page but it's now showing us that we've got a lot more shading to do to actually build up the tones on the side of Tom's head and around his eyes to give us more three-dimensionality so now I'm being very careful to indicate the hair that's coming down the front of Tom's fringe and then even as we do this you can actually see that the shadow underneath is not dark enough and this is where as you add more and more tone you see what more work you've got to do and people say oh how long does it take to actually do a drawing till it's finished that is the literally correct answer you do a piece of art until it is finished you can try and put a time limit on it but in reality you've got to just keep working at it until you are happy that it's complete to the point that you are content with now just sharpening the pencil I'm still using the 4B and 
I'm just coming in and filling in these shadows. Underneath the hairline. Now, a lot of them actually follow the shape of the hair. So I'm doing exactly the same as I did for the hair. So I'm drawing the shadows for these lines where they come down. Just indicate a few smaller ones. Now, right up in the hairline in the corner, we can increase the tone. And that's the shade and the shadow coming down. Now above his eye, his right eye, we've got two little amounts of tone that are coming over. And then you've got that crease that goes right across his forehead. And then the secondary crease line just above. And now we're just using cross hatching for the shading to fill in as much as we can nice and quickly so you can see we're just coming down filling the shading in we've got this crease underneath his right eye and coming off the corner right underneath the right eye we've got the crease line above and then right up into the socket underneath his eyebrow now you can see we're just getting nicer tone and three-dimensionality now and I'm going for this kind of quite nice sketchy tone and you're able to do this and it works with the tone that you've put on underneath already and you've smudged about when I mean, we did it twice and it just helps to give that total tonal definition that you need. And it's your tonal values that I'm just twisting the pencil again. This is a 4B. I'm just letting it, letting the weight of it do its own work. that as you keep on filling in these tonal shapes, just add in little bits. And it's only practice and experience. And that, that's the thing, I, I did answer a comment earlier today where somebody said, how long have I been painting and drawing? I said, well, I've been drawing now for over 40 years and I'm still learning. It's still a challenge and something exciting to do. Every time you come to the paper, it's a wonderful thing to actually start with a blank piece of paper and then end up with a finished image at the end. So here we've got this slight increased bit of tone in between his two eyes that then goes up his forehead. And it's only by looking and constantly building you can see we're just getting more better definition and it just starts to look more and more lifelike the more that you put on and it's just time and experience the same as any profession or any job that you want to do
you want to get better at drawing you just keep doing it over and over so here we're drawing the bag underneath his right eye and then we want a little bit more tone in between those two kind of crease lines and they're going around now again down by the side of his nose now here we can really increase the tone we've got this kind of rectangle of shadow then coming down this triangle underneath his nose it's much darker on this side and then we've got the definition of the sharpness of the line there and we've got just some interesting little tones that are inside the very bottom of his nose and what's interesting you've kind of got a horizontal you can see like the line here going across there and that's just a bit more definition created by building up the shadow now this crease right in the corner and then we've got the shadow line coming down the side of his nose and it lightens off but then we've got kind of triangle of shade and there that's really really starting to come together you just seen the eyes start to lift off the page right underneath the eyebrow again that we can just follow the shape of his forehead and you can see I'm just essentially cross hatching just adding some lines and it's just building up the tone and the depth of tone and the density of the darker values and it just makes it look more real and you can see there in comparison on the reference photo you know you've got this like darker patch created by the shadow coming off his hair now again I'm just gonna quickly now build in some more of these darker tones right in the corner of his mouth where you've got the crease from his line from his nose down into his cheek we can just build up the shadow so it's darker there than it is there underneath his bottom lip the shadow coming round we've got that curve created by the crease at the top of his chin underneath his bottom lip and we've got that kind of triangle of shadow going up underneath his mouth it's much darker There. again now we can increase the tone in the crease on his left hand side of his cheek and 
and we can fill that shade in a little bit more. You can see how the shape comes out and over quite far before it starts to curve around. Then a little bit more tone there. Now we've got the curve of his nose coming down where the highlight is. And then we've got a slight darker tone on the other side of the highlight. That then makes this kind of triangle of tone on the left hand side of his nose. And this really is drawing. You just you just fill in an area and then you see, oh, I, I could do this here now. Like I'm doing now, just building up that little bit of tone coming down underneath his right eye. And building the dark in the corner of that eye socket. Again, that's going up. Right the way up the top of his head. Little bit of extra shadow on that side of his forehead. down the side of his left hand side of his face just filling in that cheek a bit and then we've got again this shadow coming down here the rest of this D just curving that up a little bit just helps to increase the smile. So there we're building that tone. You can see how it comes across and you've got a little right angle bit there. And then it comes down again, down his left hand cheek. Right down his neck. to the tone underneath his chin. I'm squinting my eyes and I can just see where I need to increase the shading. I'm just using the flat of the pencil, not turning it. And I'm just gently creating the shape of that shadow that gives definition on that jaw. I'm just using the tip a little bit, increasing the angle. And there you can see that's really <clears throat> starting to give form down the bottom part of his face. Again, I'm going to quickly fill in all of this shadow underneath his chin. And you can see we've got the directional line of the darker tone in the same way as we've got the direction caused as very strong here, but it's soft underneath his chin. It's not as defined is the shadow on his nose. So you just need to be careful and just soften it down a little bit. And again, up the side of his cheek, going up to his ear, right the way up. It's the right of his cheek going up to the side of his head. 
and then we can really increase the tone right the way across the ear we've got to darken that down but because we've got the construction lines and then the slight detail lines in that we did earlier you're not losing all of your drawing so we can add in that little bit of detail in that ear carefully just increase the dark that little bit the real dark into his ear canal and then I'm really softening off the edge of his hair where it comes over his ear and so now we're coming up the side of his head again right the way up And you can start to see now, because we've got the directional light coming this way, you can see how we've got the three planes. So you've got the strongest highlight here, mid-tones on the front, and then the darker shadows down the side. And you've just got to build it very, very carefully. And then here we've got his cheek. We've got to fill that in all the way across and then where it curves over we can just build the tone up just go backwards and forwards gently and carefully you can just see me just oscillating backwards and forwards and it's built that tone up and made his cheek look three-dimensional but you've got this highlight that's appearing there Now the same, got this kind of little triangle of shade coming down from the corner of his mouth and the same coming over his top lip there. So now we're just trying to carry on building up the intensity of the darks that we need and you can see here right in this corner so we've got this kind of rectangle of shadow but we really need kind of little triangle of shade and we just need to darken it up and again I'm just using the tip of the pencil just backwards and forwards carefully and this is just how you build up the detail when you haven't got solid crisp lines it really is your tonal values that will give the reality to your face that you are working on so right underneath his nose his nostril we've got that dark line so i'm just indicating that that little bit more and then the dark right in the crease at the bottom and then where his nostril and his nose covers we can bring that tone down you can see there's a little bit more shadow there and then where his nose comes down on this side we can then very gently increase the tone and it just curves round and over we've got a little bit more shadow going to the edge
and then we've got the darker tones in this triangle of shadow so I've just got a pencil underneath my hand off camera that I was knocking and it was disrupting the flow of my pencil and there you can see we've just intensified and increased the definition of that shadow underneath his nose now we're going to come up and do into his right eye we've got the crease that comes down right underneath we've got that tone right in the going up to the corner of his eye and then the second crease that's closer to his lower eyelid and then right in the corner and then coming down the side of his head cheek just got to increase that a little bit then right underneath in the corner of his eye and coming over we've got this little arc of tone that's inside the eye socket now you can see that just helps to lift that a little bit more definition and I was just careful around the eye so as not to obliterate the all the hard work that we've done and then as you come down the nose where we've got this triangle you can see we've got this bit of tone extends across the bridge of his nose then we've got some little lines that are crossing over so you just squiggle some lines over and we've got that vertical going up then another vertical going up right by this highlight And across the highlight we can just fill in some little bits with the pencil softly and you can see how we've got that arc of the highlight still but it's just softening in and working together with us as the forehead curves around slowly Now, here we've got the curve of his nose that then goes up to where his eyebrows are. We can just indicate some eyebrows a little bit. Just a little bit more. And then they come down. And we've got the dark right in this corner where it goes up underneath his eyebrow. So we can increase the shape of the shade created by the corner of his eye socket and his eyebrow. And then that arc comes down. And creates that corner for us. Then 
right underneath his right eye and we've got this shadow you can see the shadow line that comes across so just put that in quickly with some cross hatching and that gives us a little bit more definition again and it is it is simply this is this is the lovely aspect of drawing it's a revelation as you keep going you are adding more tone and you're revealing the person's face more and more or whatever the object is that you're drawing cat dog or whatever it is and this is the beauty and joy i just want you to have fun drawing and develop your skills because it's something that i have now done for over 40 years and it's absolutely beautiful to be able to keep on doing this so there we, you can see we're just increasing the tone next to the corner of his mouth and then the intensity of that shadow right in the corner Again, the same on this side. Got a much stronger tone there in that crease. And when the crease goes up to his nose, we can increase the dark. And his cheek as it curves around again I'm just lightly pressing on and the pencil is doing most of the work for me now Again, we're just increasing the shade on the lips. Leaving this highlighted bit. Now, I'm going in the direction of the lines in the lips. And that gives us that reality that we're after. curve coming down from underneath his mouth just at the top of his chin and down the right hand side of his chin that's looking quite nice I hope you're having fun this is absolute blast again it's just how to draw a portrait this is just the simple process of taking your time and building up the tones that you need just adding slowly I say here on the cheek we're now just building that tone up to allow this highlighted area to stand out you can see you've got the shape of the shadow of his nose creating the effect that we need in accentuating the highlight on the cheek now coming down right 
really just quickly accentuating that tone that we need underneath his chin and his cheek. Using the flat side of the pencil. And here we've got the shadow. And again, I'm just going around and spotting where I need to just increase little bits of tone. And because it's kind of impressionistic. So here, down the eye socket, I don't have to rest my hand completely down on the paper. Because I'm following the shapes that we've already laid down and made. And it just makes the drawing process so much simpler. So here, we can build up that shade. And then we've got these little creases in his cheek and then when it comes down here we've got a little bit extra tone then coming down the neck next to his chin and then where we've got the tone underneath his chin I'm just using the flat and you can see that's really helping to give that form but we're not putting solid crisp lines on we're only building and adding tone so coming down right to the neck and the collar going up where we've got this reflected highlight on his cheek We're able to go up the side of his cheek now, where his cheekbone is. You've got a little bit of a curve of shadow. The eye going up to the side of the forehead by the eyebrow. The hairline. And it's allowing those reflected highlights to show out. That's actually really, really lovely. And then when you just come over and then just do some tone going over the lot, it just kind of molds it all together. And the same going over the cheek. filling in little by little but you can see I'm just leaving that highlighted area available and just softening the cheek round and round and just gives it the tone that we need now again his ear I'm now just going over and bringing the darkness of his ear down to match this predominantly I'm going to come in and where we've got his ear canal using the tip of the pencil now it's quite sharp but it will blunt because it's a 4B very quickly and you can see here where we've got that nice dark line on the edge of his cheek right next to his ear but it's soft so I'm just feathering it off Just gently feathering the edge. And then that goes right the way up. And curves across to the hairline. And we've got another one that comes down. We can push that out a bit. And there we're getting a lot of really lovely tone together. 
So right in the ear canal, we've got this dark tone in the center, but we need to soften it out at the edge. We've got a kind of V that goes up there. And we can just darken that above. Again, I'm just using the flat part of the pencil. Now you can see there that's quite highlighted. So I'm just softening it down. But increasing the shadow next to it. Then we've got this lovely dark triangle the folds of his ear at the back. And then we've got where it comes down. You've got that triangle that we made. Filling the tone in. Now, very carefully, just softening the edge down the edge of the ear. before I really press on and make that dark inside part. Then we've got this shape of his ear that creates the edge going into his ear canal. That's that little bit darker and these shapes going over the top. Got a kind of diamond shape of tone. There. And that goes down to the top of the ear canal. We can just fill in and build the tones up. Now all of a sudden you can see the ear has gone backwards because it's in the shadow. Soften the edge there, right underneath. And then right round the back. Need to bring that darker tone down. Just go over it a little bit to send that ear back that little bit more. And the same with the actual earlobe. We still want it a little bit lighter than these sections, but we can just mute it down. So we've got the three dimensionality that we need in the ear, but it's actually now cohesive in the shadow area on the side of Tom's head. Now we're just doing the same, just squinting, seeing where I want the darker shapes and shades. And that's how that works in giving us great form on the head of a portrait subject. You can see I'm just now again bringing that slightly darker tone up. Just squinting, I can see there needs to be a little bit there on the side of his chin. There, going up to the corner of his mouth. Right in the corner of his mouth. Right underneath the nose. corner of his right nostril. And it just starts to unify. You see the actual full drawing start to unify and become a cohesive whole. A little bit of tone across the forehead.
then on the eye underneath this eye and I'm literally like kind of going round the the face clockwork in a sense just going round just building and adding little bits now there where the eye curves around you can see that we need a little bit of tone coming down there the same it goes up into the eye socket and this bit coming off the nose and then coming down the side of his mouth really is just a question of building and adding tones until you are really satisfied now here we've got the crease in his neck so I'm just curving that around and building and you can see how just adding the cross hatching more and more is giving us greater definition but because we just had the all the tones that are underneath every little bit that you do it starts to just build more and more reality into the subject on the shadow more at the top of his head and then we can increase the shadow lines of his hair the nice spiky bits at the front and we're, we're getting close so this is quite quite lovely and good and we've got you know final details and highlights and little bits and pieces so here we can indicate those that is hair shadow and that's kind of looking really really lovely so here coming across because we've got the underneath part of his cheek just add that little bit and because I'm going over this entire area it fills in not only that extra highlighted bit that needs a little bit of tone but it also fills in the roundness of the cheek again these little bits on the side of his nose and we're doing the same here now going up and filling in the roundness there's a little bit of shade on the cheek coming down and going off to the side and we can increase the intensity of the shadow caused down here by this hoodie now that's looking really really lovely we really do have final details and bits and bobs to do just sharpening my 4b pencil <clears throat> and we now really are coming up to kind of final details so here we've got the kind of reflected shadow it's leaving a reflected highlight inside just bringing some of the dark down here underneath his corner of his mouth increasing the dark on his lip
it really is. It's just a case of now you're deciding how much further am I going to go? How much more doodling can you carry on doing? And, and it is endless. You can keep going for a long, long time. <clears throat> but it is just a case of drawing until you are satisfied. Now, I'm just increasing some of these tones around on Tom and his face. And just with the sharpened tip, it just helps when you ooh, nearly catapulted the 2B pencil there off onto a journey somewhere else. But every amount of line that you put on is going to increase definition. But if you do too much in one area, it could make another area be lacking. And that's why you need to kind of work around. So here you can see we've got coming off his lip. We've got a bit of a darker shadow that comes down. And then just coming around his lip, we need to increase that tone a little bit there. And then that crease in his chin. Now where that comes down, go a little bit of darker. And it is just these fantastic shapes of tone that really caught caught me in this particular image of Tom. It's like, oh, that'll be a challenge. Because this is an indoor shot with two kind of points of light with reflected highlights and shadows. So again, I'm just bringing the tone down a little bit more. Again, just increasing, just simple cross hatching, just going backwards and forwards. And I am just twisting the pencil a little bit as I go, just keeping the tip that little bit sharper rather than letting it flatten down. And then the cross hatching does the work of harmonizing the shades underneath because we're going over all of the shades that we've done previously. And it's even things like down here on his neck, just simple cross hatching again giving us more definition. There's a whole picture. So I'm just squinting my eyes and looking at the reference. To just develop the tones where I need to harmonise everything. And this is really good. So here we've got this crease underneath his eye. Now, one of the things that we're going to do in a moment that we'll then just build on is actually pick out the stronger highlights and then slightly softer highlights with the putty rubber. And that'll really lift Tom's face off the paper then. So here we've got the shadow And that needs to curve around a little bit more on his cheek. And 
intensify the shadow going in. Again, the same coming up here in this eye now, right in this corner, Make, making it match this area here. And that's looking pretty good. Again, I'm now going right over the corner of his head, down this side, down the cheek. Now, what's interesting is we've got this little bit of cord. And I'm just very loosely and quickly indicating the kind of pattern in the actual cord and where that goes inside the shapes that we actually drew earlier. Now again these are just simple details that are going to help build up our definition of Tom. So using the tip of the pencil I'm just increasing that line the intensity of the line all the way along there and that just sharpens that up a little bit. Now coming down the side of his cheek into this area that his collar creates just twisting the pencil And again, I'm not going to, oh, I've done it again. I'm not going to fill in all of Tom's top. I'm just leaving that as empty space and your mind is, will make up. Okay, like I said, I'm just putting some little squiggles in. Luke's arty. And so where I put that little mark on again, just put a little couple of marks either side. And it just helps make the actual drawing look arty and complete in that kind of slightly artistic way. Now again, that's something I don't really touch on very often. You know, when am I inspired to draw? Uh, you get up and you draw or you paint. It's not when I'm inspired. That's a complete and utter load of cobblers. You know, a plumber is not inspired. You may have some inspiration that says, I want to draw or paint such and such, or I want to do a series on such and such. But you then have to be diligent and applied and do the work that is necessary to actually get the art done that you were inspired to create. It is hard work and you've got to be applied. So here now, see we are really getting there. And that's really starting to come together. Just increasing some of the tone up on his, going up his forehead. And I'm doing this really quickly. Again, just nice and loose lines, impressionistic. Now, I'm going to come in with the putty rubber and right here going up his nose we've got that very strong highlight. Now I'm just increasing the highlight in his eyes
and then right up here we've got I'm just dabbing nice highlight I'm gonna pull this into a long point so that you can see a bit better but also so that I can have a little bit more control and this is giving me the kind of dappled highlight on his forehead Now you can see we've got that strong highlight next to where the shadow's coming down off his hair. And we've just got again I'm just gently touching highlight over the top of his right eye. Going up into underneath his eye socket. A little bit of reflected highlight, so I'm just using the side and just dabbing it ever so gently. Again, the same going up there. Little crease in between. His forehead. Now on his left eye creases to the side over the top highlight on his lower eyelid again just dabbing gently coming down the cheek going up over his upper eyelid and you can see that's now really giving us lovely three-dimensional form to Tom's head over his eyebrow again I'm just increasing the reflected highlights bridge of his nose got these little creases now up on his forehead we've got little highlight spots in between the shadows of his hair coming down then just dappling that little bit coming across his forehead We've got quite a strong highlight here on the edge. So I've just indicated that and then coming up the side of his forehead. And again, this is this is using a putty rubber is part of your drawing equipment. It's a drawing tool. The highlight coming over his nose. Again, I'm not taking all the pencil off. We can see how this comes up in between the two eyeballs and then you can just smudge it with your finger a little bit. The edge of his nose on this side. Now right on the tip of his nose here. Got a nice little point. I'm just dappling, same on his cheek. Now on this right in the corner of his left eye. So I'm pulling this to a really fine point. I'm just being very gentle. There's a highlight right around the tear duct. And just underneath, in the softness, I'm just dabbling very, very gently. You've got a reflected highlight. And that just helps to give a little bit of clarity.
Again, I'm just doing this nice and quickly, being a little bit more impressionistic. Now, on this side, we've got the same. We've got a nice highlight on the lower eyelid underneath the eye. And then we've got highlight from the tear duct just coming down and going up and then just this shape on the top of his cheek and then we've got these lovely reflected highlights coming down to the corner of his mouth just the warmth of the light in there. Now sharpen up the highlight underneath the strong part of this triangle of light. Then we can put a reflected highlight underneath the, no the nose and the nostril. A little bit of one on that side. You can see how that's really starting to lift off. Again, just that little bit there on his cheek and on the ear. And then right on his lip. I'm just going to come in with a 2B pencil where just went a little bit far with the highlight. top lip going down to the corner and then right in the corner of this crease again just pinching it to a point we've got a reflected highlight and down the edge of his cheek where we've got these little crease shadows there just want to feather a little bit now his chin, right at the bottom, just smoothing a bit with my finger afterwards. Top lip. Just mottling the front of his chin. And that's looking pretty good. And down the side of his neck. <laughs> now that's quite lovely. I hope you're enjoying this. This is been a real joy to do but it shows you that what you can do you know you can do a portrait of anybody it doesn't have to just be a famous person this is my 2b pencil I'm just going to sharpen it and this really is now final details so here on Tom's chin we've got couple of his little spots, his freckles and moles on his cheek here, just softening the edge. And we've got that little bit there, another couple there, just indicating <sighs> some of his little marks across his face and on his cheek here we've got one two three four little three in a row going down there and here we've got and you can see where we've got the entrance to the ear canal this is where we did actually put it on but it's kind of disappeared so 
you use your reference points that we actually put in earlier. To put in this lovely characteristic mark on Tom's face. And then above, next to his eye, so we've got some little clusters. They're like star constellations. And this is this is lovely. This is a real joy to do. Because this is part of the character of every individual human being. Now you see that really adds beautiful character to your drawing and there's people say oh there's a fine line between flattery or absolute copying you can choose how much to put in you know you can flatter you can soften lines or you can accentuate stronger lines that is entirely your prerogative as an artist. But some lines and spots and marks are absolute characteristics of a person. So now I'm going to come back in. I'm just going to darken this eyebrow a little bit. And the shape where it comes over. And then the same on this one. We need to just increase. You see how it goes up? We've got the shadow there from above the tear duct. We can darken that down a little bit. And we've got this shape of the shadow kind of caused by the hairs around on Tom's eyebrow. But again, I'm still drawing it in the direction that the eyebrow needs to go. We can just indicate some hairs. And then right in that corner. And the same on this side, just increase it, softening the shadow around the actual eye line. And you know, I'm really happy with that. So we're just going to put down here, Tom. YouTube Creator Insider On this side Billy 2020 Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you can see that you can do a portrait of anybody and it's just good fun to be able to do this. Anyway, thanks ever so much. Please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next drawing lesson. Ta-da!